Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, duelists of all ages, welcome to the season one finale of The Secrets of Yu-Gi-Oh! Here's your host, Purple Pineapple Television! With over 12,000 cards available for players to choose from, the majority of which saw their initial debut in the anime, you might be inclined to believe that every card from the anime has received a physical print. But the truth is, there are still hundreds of cards from the anime that have never transitioned to the TCG or the OCG. It's almost as though they're being kept hidden. Are these cards simply too powerful to introduce to today's metagame? Today, we're uncovering the secrets of Yu-Gi-Oh! It's taken us 15 episodes, but we finally reached the end of the Duel Monsters era, and we're finally covering a series of cards that has been requested since the introduction of this weekly series. Valen's Armor Cards, the one and only truly anime-exclusive archetype from DM. An entire 17 card archetype is a huge undertaking for just one person. I want to make sure that I don't miss anything. Leave no piece of armor unturned. So I've enlisted the help of another expert. What's up guys, it's me Spidey from the Underground YGO channel. And today I'm here to talk to you guys about one of my personal favorite decks from the anime, Valen's Armor Deck. Now. With his deck, this is an anime exclusive only, so we haven't seen it in real life, but I'm here to talk to you guys about some of the cards that were in his deck. Glad to have you on board, Spidey. Let's suit up and get the season finale rolling. Seeing the archetype in action during the Waking the Dragons arc serves to remind us all that sometimes you just have to put the cards down and punch your opponent in the face. I'm looking at you, Mystic Mind players. That's beside the point. It's only fitting to start with the monsters of the archetype, so Spidey, what can you tell me about Valen's armor monsters? All armor monsters share two effects in addition to their own unique effects, but only one armor monster can attack during each battle phase. But if you control two or more armor monsters, if one of those armor monsters that you control selected as an attack target, you can then change that attack target to another armor monster that you control. Keep these two shared effects in mind as they'll be more apparently useful when we cover specific monsters of the archetype. Getting into our first two actual monsters, Active Guard is a level 4 Earth Machine type with 0 attack and 2500 defense. On a soft once per turn, you take no battle damage from battle or effects. But destroy this card during the end phase of the turn this effect is activated. It's no Waboku, but it's serviceable. Advanced Shield is a level 4 Earth Machine type with 1000 attack and 0 defense, which can't be summoned in any way if you control no face-up armor monsters. This card also cannot declare an attack. My grandfather who owns a card shop always told me to never judge a book by its cover. I'm just going to assume that he wasn't talking about this one. Moving on to one of my personal favorites, Big Bang Blow, a level 4 earth machine type monster with 0 attack points and 0 defense points. If this card is destroyed by battle while you control 2 or more armor monsters, both players take damage equal to the combined attack points of all monsters they control. After that, destroy all monsters on the field. The next card is Black Hole Shield, a level 4 earth monster, machine typing with 0 attack points and 0 defense points. If another face up machine monster you control is selected as an attack target, this activates as a quick effect. You tribute this monster, then if you do, that monster cannot be destroyed by battle and you take no battle damage from battles involving that monster during this battle phase only. We'll see this trend continue with armor monsters where their effects vary widely, ranging from seemingly useless to mediocre on a good day and genuinely useful in a myriad of game states. Burning Knuckle is a level 3 earth machine type with 0 attack and 1000 defense, and this monster gains 200 attack for each face up armor monster you control. If this card attacks and is destroyed by battle, you can target one face up monster your opponent controls, it loses attack equal to this card's attack when it was destroyed. I truly hate monsters who give an effect when pulling a kamikaze into the opponent's monster. Unlike something like, say, Slate Warrior, who at least has the courtesy to come pre-equipped with a respectable 1900 attack points, this rusty Hulk hand is relying on you controlling a full field of armor monsters, one of which needs to specifically be active guard unless you feel like actively putting yourself at a disadvantage. Spoiler, this won't be a huge problem getting into later cards, but I'm still not a fan. Buster Knuckle is a level 3 earth machine type with 0 attack and defense, and if you control no face up armor monsters this monster cannot be summoned, just like advanced shield. 
This monster also gains 200 attack for each face-up armor monster you control exactly like Burning Knuckle. This has to be the most original card I've ever seen. If this card attacks a defense position monster, inflict piercing battle damage. I wouldn't describe Buster as bad per se, but uninspired. He also used cards like Buster Pile, a level 4 earth machine type monster with 0 attack points and 0 defense points. This card cannot be destroyed by battle, you also take no battle damage from any battles involving this card, but if this card attacks your opponent's monster, you destroy that monster after damage calculations and then inflict 500 damage to the opponent. Valen also used cards like Double Cloth Armor, a level 6 Earth Machine type monster with 0 attack points and 0 defense points. If this card cannot attack, but if this card is attacked by your opponent's monster, you're then going to inflict damage to your opponent equal to half the attack points of the attacking monster and then destroy both monsters. Another one of my personal favorites, you got Jet Gauntlet, a level 4 earth machine type monster with 0 attack points and 1500 defense points. If this card battles an opponent's monster, you can destroy both monsters at the start of the damage step without damage calculation, so it can just pop anything. Easily the best showing for armor monsters thus far, and it only gets better from here. Overboost is a level 4 earth machine type with 0 attack and 1000 defense, and this monster allows all of your armor monsters to attack your opponent directly. But if an armor monster you control attacks your opponent directly with this effect, destroy this card during the end phase. Unless you've had your ears plugged and your eyes closed up to this point, it's clear that the armor archetype is battle oriented. I suppose that shouldn't come as a surprise considering Valen physically fought his opponent's monsters. And if you're new here, one thing I will always preach is that battle focused decks are perfectly fine. Matter of fact, we need more of them in the meta. However, if you're running Unga Bunga Beatdown, you need to be ready for battle traps, the thing that will stop your deck in its tracks. Trap Buster has you covered in a pretty unique way, reminiscent of Ancient Gears, a level 3 earth machine type with zero attack and defense. It negates the effects of your opponent's trap cards that would target one armor monster you control or would destroy two or more monsters on the field. This is pretty nice, clear synergy within its own archetype, but it also adds flavor with the generic protection on its secondary effect requirement, opening the floodgates for hybrid builds that we'll touch on once we've covered the remaining cards. Now this card I feel like he must have summoned at least 15 times, I think Valen had like 7 copies of this in his deck. Psychic Armor Head, a level 4 earth machine type monster with 0 attack points and 500 defense points. During the draw phase, you can add an armor monster from your deck to your hand instead of your normal draw. But during your standby phase, if this card is in your graveyard, you can special summon it in attack position. This card cannot attack. He must have used this card 15 times throughout the duel because every turn Joey destroyed it and he kept bringing it back. So that wraps up the armor monsters and I feel like we're probably thinking the same thing. The majority of these effects rely on multiple armor monsters being present on the field with each other. How do I make that happen? Great question, and the archetype back row holds even greater answers. Starting with Armored Gravitation, a normal spell card which special summons up to 4 level 4 or lower armor monsters in face up attack position from your deck. Those special summon monsters are destroyed during the end phase. Destruction during the end phase continues to be one of the most irrelevant phrases ever printed on Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Very rarely will you find yourself in the situation that you can't use this newly filled field of armor monsters for an Xyz or Link summon. But for the alternate realities in which you do, some of our remaining back row would prefer armor monsters to be in the scrap heap. I wonder how many of you remember this card, Data Brain, which can only be equipped to Psychic Armor Head. Now, if the equipped monster is destroyed by the effect of your opponent's spell card, during your next main phase 1, you can activate this card from your graveyard and then copy the effect of the spell card that then destroyed your Psychic Armor Head. But, if you activate this card's effect this way, you also have to destroy it during the end phase. This is the card that Valen used to copy that um, Claw of Hairmost Buster card that Joey just had the turn before. This card, along with Psychic Armorhead, communicated data to Valen in the anime on what plays to make, 
relaying card effects, success probabilities of certain moves, and suggested strategies. So just like regular Yu-Gi-Oh players, it's a goddamn know-it-all. Now this is the card where I thought he was cheating because you already had armor gravitation, but then he had another card called full armor gravitation, which you excavate the top 10 cards from your deck, but then you special summon as many armor monsters as possible among the cards that you excavated, but you gotta banish the um the, the rest of the cards. I was just like, when he used it, I was like, dude, that's cheating. Like you just had that card. You just go, there's a stronger version. Like, you, come on, stop cheating. No doubts about it, this is stupidly overpowered. But the worst defense is that a physical print would be nerfed without changing a single word. In the context of the anime duel, where the seal of Ori Kalkos allowed its user to use all spell and trap zones as monster zones, this could potentially allow the player to summon up to 9 armor monsters. Even without that, this is still ridiculously strong, and we've yet to reach the banish everything face down era of the game, so you're also given the opportunity to recover whatever doesn't get summoned. Probably my favorite of the bunch. Getting into the final cards of the archetype, we're revisiting Armored Gravitation as well as the armor monsters that destroy themselves and or other armor monsters after using their effects. Magnet Armor is sadly not Magnet Warrior support, but a normal trap card that special summons one armor monster from your graveyard in face-up attack position and it's destroyed during the end phase. Oh no! Whatever will I do? Jokes aside, I'd personally run Call of the Haunted over this, but I respect you for playing a deck in its purest form if you run it. And our final card of Valen's Armor Archetype, despite being strictly tied to the archetype, gives cards like Soul Charge a run for its money. Phoenix Gravitation, a normal spell card which can only be activated if you control Psychic Armor Head. Special summon four armor monsters with different names from your graveyard. Those special summon monsters are destroyed during the end phase. What else can you say? Card good. Now that duel between Joey and Valen is probably one of my favorite duels in the anime, just the way how they were going back and forth with each other. Once Joey activated the Lord of Red, that was to me my moment. That was like the Yu-Gi-Oh version of Goku turning Super Saiyan. Like that was just so epic. I wasn't expecting that and you don't see a card game getting fought with the hands. So it was very interesting to see. That duel really made me appreciate Valen's armor deck because I really do wish it existed in real life because there's so many cards that do exist in today's game that I want to be able to use with it. And that's something we really haven't been able to look at in the series, having never covered a fully fleshed archetype. Now we have the opportunity to look at outside support from today's card pool and actually make a strong case for these cards to be imported to the physical game. One of the first outside supporting cards that came to mind was Girgia Augur, which is able to search 8 out of the 12 total armor monsters. You have the Ancient Gear Ballista that can link summon from 2 armor monsters on the field to add more cards, then like Ancient Gear Box which can directly search out Psychic Armor Head, then you got Ancient Gear Dragon that can set up your armor monsters and other machine cards, offering for easy negations from the deck. So the fact that it can like really work with all those armor cards, I would love to see Kisame do that and I wish I could have him in this video, but maybe in the next time you'll see us. As far as generic machine support, machine duplication is an obvious choice for this deck, having all low attack machine monsters to swarm the field even more efficiently than they are already capable of. And a card that piqued my interest is Clockwork Knight, which can boost your armor monsters and weaken your opponent's monsters, perfect for a battle-focused strategy. Must be a coincidence that the armor deck is exactly that. It also gives you a search on a Banish from Grave effect. But there's so many other cards that you have the Machine Citadel that when it's into the graveyard, you can special summon more of the armor monsters. You got Machina Metal Cruncher that can search more of them. And the archetype overall plays really well with the Infinitract archetype, opening up potential builds for the deck outside of the standard rank 3 and 4 toolbox. And Armor Infitract just sounds like a cool deck. And like if I could do like a segment that I normally do on my channel called the Couldsby Metal where like we make our own fantasy support cards because it's like I always looked at the armor monsters as union monsters so like I would want to have something similar to how they had the um ABC, XYZ, VW, all of those cards. I would want something like that to exist for the Valen cards like you can make their own version of Union Hanger but instead of light monsters it could be the earth monsters and you just search them out which one is summon like anything to help them get to their effects a little bit faster but i would kind of want to see them work in that fashion i just think that there's such an interesting deck to be used in the game it's one of my personal favorites that was in the anime and never got made into real life i know one day kunami might make it but until then a boy can dream because that's one of those decks from my childhood that had probably a top five duel that i've seen throughout the um anime so 
that's just what I think of these guys. You let me know what you think. Once again, thank you, Purple Pineapple TV, for having me on your channel. This is Spidey from Underground YGO, and I'll see you guys in the next one, hopefully with Kisame. Peace. And that's going to officially wrap up Season 1 of The Secrets of Yu-Gi-Oh! First off, huge shout out to Spidey from Underground for jumping on this video with me. Highly recommend their channel, they make some awesome Yu-Gi-Oh! content. Second, thank you to all of you. This series kind of inadvertently started with one of the first videos I ever posted on this channel, talking about Grandpa's Ancient Dragon deck. And at the time, I didn't have any intentions on making a series out of this, let alone making a full 15 episode season. It's pretty crazy, but I can't thank you all enough for the support you've shown me, my channel, and this series. So what happens from here? Well, I'm going to be taking a week off from the official series, but you'll want to tune in next Friday because we'll be doing a full recap of Season 1, going over some of my favorite cards from this season, talking about the bigger picture of anime exclusives, and I also want to open the floor up for a Q&A regarding the series. What questions do you have about this series, the upcoming Season 2? What critiques do you have? Anything you want to ask and I'll answer it in next week's recap episode. Drop your comments down below. If you liked the video, don't forget to drop a big thumbs up. It really does help to push this series to the world and is greatly appreciated as always guys. And until next time, this has been Purple Pineapple TV with special guest Spidey from Underground YGO. Signing off.